Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for clicking to that. It means a lot to you guys keep clicking. If you guys keep clicking, I'll keep making. And I, I'm just, I'm not really excited for the new season. I don't know. I, I, I'm usually the most hyped person ever. If you've followed my channel through 41 and 42, I've always been the person who's always been so positive. Well, this season is, is you know, the cast looks top tier. It could be just like Kageon, blah, 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 this and that. And I've been let down now twice in a row. I've only covered two seasons. I've done daily content through both seasons. So I've made a bunch of videos, hundreds on each season. And so to me, it's very rare that I'm not excited for a season. I'm going to go through why specifically. It's really just a video on all of my grievances for this new era of Survivor and really my hopes for the future, what they can stop, what they can start doing. Sort of like a love letter to the Survivor production as to what they've been doing wrong and what they can do to improve the show in the future as always like share subscribe do all that good stuff because it's free it's easy and it really helps out the channel i suppose i've lost the hope that i have for the f future seasons from the fact that these past two seasons have just been that bad right it has things that i just actively don't like and think are bad for the show i'm going to list those things off right now first of all 26 days absolutely un acceptable to me it feels like diet survivor right because it feels like survivor but like not as iconic not as long obviously not as hard but also harder in the worst ways right because they're starving them which makes them less energetic and less likely to make big moves because they're so exhausted mentally put tony out there and starve him he's not going to be as fun to watch so it makes worse tv in both of these seasons we've seen pre-merge uh, alliances kind of dominate the post-merge due to this weird format the pre-merge is like two-thirds of the game and the merge is like maybe 10 days and that's mostly because they literally vote somebody off almost every freaking day i mean it's just stupid the, the the timing of the show is messed up by it it's less iconic and the players are being starved which leads to worse tv as far as twists and advantages go, it's kind of like hit or miss for me. When it hits, it's okay. And when it misses, it's absolutely horrible. Hourglass and do or die were two twists that were one, not fun, and two, unfair, right? Because usually it's one or the other. Both of these only worked in very small, very narrow scenarios that did not happen. It did not come to fruition, except in 42, where I guess it kind of worked. It led to a Jonathan versus Lindsay episode, which didn't even really happen because they picked the box correctly. I think in the end, these twists just don't add to the show and they're very unfair to the players. As far as advantages go, I think the three-way idols were not a good addition to the show. I think the phrases were okay. It was kind of fun, I guess, but doing it two, two times in a row got really old very quickly. On top of that, it limited the pre-merge idol plays to only three max right like i feel like if someone plays an idol on a tribe in the pre-merge they should be able to find it again and it really limited the circulation of idols which is something that some people like i personally think that idols have never really been the issue it's always been everything else and so to me i found that advantage to be bad on top of that the knowledge is power one i think was unfair because the players in the game did not know about it i think it would have worked if, if they told the players hey this exists be careful that would have been much more fair to me as far as casting goes, obviously the 50% BIPOC initiative is harmful. I think it discriminates, right? Because you're saying cast a certain race. I think the, the cast should be purely based off of skill level. Skill level as far as entertainment goes and also as far as the level of gameplay that they can bring to the game. I think it, it should have nothing to do with your race. And I think purposely discriminating based off race in the name of equity and inclusion is not only laughable, but it's actually hypocritical. Another thing that I just have a real disdain for is when they split up the merge tribe. So they go from pre-merge to merge when they merge. And now, no, 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 we're actually going to take a step back in the game, revert to the pre-merge and basically put you in two tribes. That may not be how they phrase it, but it's really what they're doing. They're reverting the game back to an earlier and less exciting stage. And for me, that's never a good thing. I think taking the merge tribe and making it a pre-merge situation is not, not only unfair, but it's just not fun to watch. And really, there's two parts to a twist. It's fair and it's fun. You want both. This is neither. Okay, the next thing I have to say is Jeff. I mean, Jeff, I put aside the, the politics and him changing guys, which I think anyone from any political background can agree is stupid and has agreed is stupid. Forget that. 
Jeff's just weird. He's acting weird. He's constantly cringily breaking the, the fourth wall, thinking that it's cool and funny. His monologues have kind of increased in time length. He seems to be trying to become like a main character, which is not what he is. He's the host of the show, and he, he needs to start acting like it. On top of that, he needs to kind of grow some balls. You know, in the past, Jeff he, he used to be super sassy. There's huge kick compilations on YouTube of him being sassy and standing up to players who weren't really doing what he liked. And I think he's just not doing that anymore. His opinions are so baseless, similar to, you know, like Peridium and Arhap, where they're so scared to have an opinion because it might offend somebody that they just don't have an opinion anymore, which is so boring. And it's a TV show. It's you're supposed to have arguments and d disagreements. It makes good TV, but he's so scared to, to offend somebody that he can't be the damn host of the damn show because he's too busy trying to be everybody's friend. Another thing I hate is these damn sob stories. They just don't have the power that, that they used to because they're being shoved down your throat, basically one after another after another. I think over half the cast, if not three fourths of the cast, gets a, a sob story on top of that. If someone gets a sob story at Tribal, it's almost always meaning that they're going home to get a little, little bit more character development before they go home. On top of that, these little like flashbacks to, to their actual life, they're not necessary. Let the player tell it in their confessional if it's that important. It's not necessary to flashback to someone's apartment building for me to get to know who they are as a person and what they've struggled with in the past. It's almost like they're casting for, okay, who has the worst sob story from when they were five? And I feel like they should be casting for who is the greatest character or, or player right now in 2022. Another thing I don't like is announcing the winner on location and then doing the reunion on location. So the winner part, I'm not a fan. I like the idea of the players getting to watch the whole season and then find out who won. But even putting, putting that aside, I feel like the bigger thing is doing the reunion right after is almost cruel, honestly, because looking at like Mike and Deshaun and Xander, at the reunions, they are just sitting there staring into space, depressed because they just figured out that they spent all this time to come in second or third place. They're not gonna answer your questions. Give them time to come to, to terms with it and be like, okay, well, if I lose, I lose. You're literally giving them five seconds and they're not going to give you good answers at this quote unquote reunion or quote unquote after party because they're still devastated. And lastly, it's the politics. I've made so many videos on it. You can literally go on my channel and just like look up the word woke on it and you'll probably find like 25 videos. So I won't really get into that part of it, but it's specifically how they edit it, right? They, they edit it so that the person who has the more left leaning point of view is always edited in the better way in the the more forgiving way as the hero of the, the situation. And that's just the exact opposite of being quote unquote equitable. So I feel like to me, there's a bunch of problems with the show. They're all kind of overarching into production. It is production's fault. The casting is not horrible, I would say. The Fiji location, although it's annoying, that's also not the part that's making the show bad. It's production. They are running their own show in, into the ground. And if they don't stop, they're going to be looking at a possible cancellation around 45 or 46. We'll just have to see. Let me know down below in the comments, what do you think about this new era? Is the show in a great place or is it about to get canceled in your opinion? None of this happens without you guys. Without you guys, I'm sure you guys speaking to a weird microphone. Join the Discord server down below. And that's what I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.